Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning in. I will be talking about the Beatles recording of Babies in Black that they did on August 11th, 1964. Uh, there's contradictory stories about where the song was written. Some say it was written at uh, John Lennon's Weybridge house and others say it was written in a hotel room back in July of 64. They all can see that it was one of the last songs that John and Paul wrote together in the same room at the same time. They called it a waltz in three-quarter time. It's actually in six-eight time. A lot like the James Ray song they, they used to play live, uh, If You Gotta Make a Fool of Somebody. Do check it out, you'll see what I mean. The stories go that the song was possibly written about uh, Astrid Kirscher, the uh, girlfriend of Stu Sutcliffe, who was the original bass player uh, of the Beatles, and he unfortunately passed away in Germany. Um, it's alluded to that the song means that John wanted to step in as Astrid's uh, boyfriend after, uh, you know, the death of Stu, but it sure would make John seem pretty callous because uh, he's, he's calling the mourning of Astrid's boyfriend as a whim and also saying, you know, how long will it take till she sees the mistakes she has made, you know, not becoming John's John's uh, girlfriend, so that's pretty far-fetched. Paul Moore alluded to the fact that it's, it's a mourning song, meaning that, you know, a girl broke up with her boyfriend and she's not ready for a new relationship, which kind of makes more sense. Um, it was the first song they recorded for uh, Beatles for Sale. They did 14 takes playing live and singing live, and then John and Paul uh, double-tracked their vocals on um, the bridges and on the last chorus. Uh, Ringo overdubbed a tambourine, and that was it. The song was ready to be mixed in a couple of days. What's really interesting and, and fun to note when you listen to the song is how they were kind of mocking hillbilly uh, music with the singing. The way they say, Shay thinks a ham, and uh, I think a her. <laughs> so you can imagine the Beatles being stoned and just having a good time with that. Uh, they were very fond of, of Babies in Black because they played it uh, just about in all their shows from late 64 till their, till their last concert at uh, Candlestick Park in uh, August of 66. Fun facts to know and tell about that Candlestick Park um, show is that there was 25,000 in attendance, but uh, 7,000 tickets were unsold. Hmm. So let's see, it was released on December 4th in the UK on Beatles for Sale, and then uh, December 15th, 1964 for uh, Beatles 65. That's where the American audience would have heard it. It's a really cool, you know, New Direction song, because it's kind of darker, and, and uh, the boys used to say, you know, uh, they used to like to do it because they knew the audience wouldn't know how to respond to the song. Uh, but it's very, very, very cool, and... Um, you know, John Lennon just does an amazing, amazing uh, 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 amount of uh, drive pushing the song along uh, with his rhythm track, which is kind of buried in the mix, but I have gone through the painstaking uh, work of getting it for you, and I'll show it to you in a moment. And once again, George Harrison comes up with just a stellar riff that you can't imagine the song not having. So that's the Babies in Black backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his Gibson J160E on Babies in Black, and his part is both easy and difficult at the same time. It's easy in the fact that to play the entire song, you only need five chords. So here's the chords you'll need to play Babies in Black, like John Lennon. You'll need an A, an E, You need a D, and then during the bridge you're going to need an F sharp minor, and a B. Now true, when he played it live, he stuck some seventh chords in there, but this is how he played on the recording. And it's fun facts to know and tell also that a lot of the times the Beatles sang the seventh scale degree, but they didn't play it, and which makes it sound fatter. When they played live, for some reason, they decided to add seventh chords, but these are the chords he played on the record. 
Now there's basically just three patterns that John uses in the entire song. Uh, but they go by pretty fast, so it's a little difficult. I will write it out exactly as he played it uh, in my charts and tabs. So the three patterns are this. Uh, it's 6-8 time, which means there's six eighth notes per measure. So the, the main pattern he uses is an eighth note, four sixteenth notes, and three eighth notes. So that would be... Now note, whenever he plays, like say he plays the A chord, he'll always at the beginning play just like maybe root fifth of the A chord and then strum through it maybe back down to the root fifth and strum through it very seldom does he go all the way to this to the first string you don't really hear that you hear that more in the singing than you do in his playing so a basic uh, like an intro after George's ba -ba -da -da -da. Now, note, John uses the round part of his pick. I'm using one with three, three round parts, makes it easier. And that helps you know, propel and make it a lot easier. So if you're using a pointy pick, just turn to the round part and just strum with the round part of the pick. So during the chorus, which it starts off, um, his main pattern is pretty much eighth note, four sixteenth note, eighth note, four sixteenth note. So like um, on the chorus. And then the third pattern would be an eighth note, two sixteenth notes, and four eighth notes, like um. So those are the three patterns you have to you have to kind of master to get this. Again, first one is second one is um, I'll play it on the A chord too. And the third one is but it goes by so fast, uh, you know, it's, 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 again, easy and difficult. So if I would take it up to speed and an eighth note is around, you know, 202 beats per minute here on this, probably about that fast, a chorus would sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. It kind of reminds me of Peggy Sue. Do you hear, you hear the, uh, the, 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 the similarity? Okay, then on a verse, it's just it's A. Again, they're singing big A7. Uh, they're singing the seventh scale degree, but John's just staying on A uh, on a verse. So once you get your arm moving, you know, I don't think you have to be as precise. What I'm writing out is precisely what he played on the record, but you know, he's just going for it. And then those are the three basic patterns that occur. So again, let me, let me play a verse up to speed. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's really fun. It's a little challenging. Get a little wrist sore, but uh, I suggest you take it, take it, you know, really slow. Make the make your metronome half speed and really, you know, really dig into. It. And you'll get it. Now on the bridge is where the F sharp minor occurs, and uh, the pattern is. Oh, he, 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 it's typical John Lennon too. He'll play the low notes. Maybe play all six strings and play the inside strings. No, no, that's probably not you know planned. It's just the way once the once he starts going, that's what happens. But it's a, it's a, it makes a cool sound. It almost makes like three chords out of one voicing. You know, like low. Right, you get three different sounds. So on the bridge, it's. The speed four, five, six. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so it's really great, really fun, and kind of challenging to get it just right. And back back to a, a, a you know the chorus and 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 uh, same basic uh, uh, patterns that I've showed you already. Like I said, if you want it exactly, charts and tabs available to download at mikebacelli.com. During George's solo, he pretty much uh, John pretty much um, extenuates the last uh, three eighth notes uh, of every measure, like you know. Now when you do the breakdown, she thinks of him. John plays on beat one, and George accentuates beat four most of the time. So on the breakdown, George, uh, John is just playing, uh, you know, simple in the low parts of, of his chord, low part of an A chord, like. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Low part, uh, like the fourth, third, and second string of the D chord. So in time, that would be, there's a breakdown. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then he just ends big with the, uh, the last verse, uh, strumming through it big. I'll just play it for you. Last verse would sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just great, you know, reckless, abandoned, uh, raucous rock and roll rhythm guitar playing by John Lennon. Really fun to do, and hope you enjoy it too. George Harrison is playing his Gretsch on Babies in Black, and you just have to stand back in amazement and awe at the genius of this young kid because, you know, here he is in the studio, more than likely hearing the song for the first time, and you've got uh, the Beatles going, I, George, you've got to come up with a riff that will be signature for the tune that'll be great for the end of time. <laughs> and, and he does. Um, and you know they did like i said earlier 14 takes of the song and and a number of them originally was because you know it was difficult for george to play the the riff perfectly at the beginning of the song so the riff goes like this now we've heard it a million times and it goes by so fast but there is a, a difficulty factor of it um, you play a, a c sharp and an a at the same time and you play a low e while you bend the b and release the B to this uh, A power chord and get your little you know whammy bar so it's not that easy but it's just absolutely perfect and he plays it a number of time with within the song and of course he also double tracks it and that's why it sounds fat on the on the uh, on the track What's just so uh, amazing about him or so intuitive about George is that, you know, since John is doing that strong, strong rhythm and, and really playing hard on, on beats uh, four, five, six, uh, George is most, mostly extenuates the, uh, the, the second beat and the third beat of, with, with 16th notes. And, and, he, and, he, and he's playing pretty much the same pattern that John does, the same three patterns, you know, eighth note, uh, three sixteenth notes, eighth note, eighth note eighth note um but he he just again accentuates beat two and three so if if the pattern is like on a instead of going he kind of he goes and he just lightly gets you know lets john push the last you know beats four five six of every measure so george is just you know he's playing that uh, the, the the riff you know which is pretty strong you know then when he gets into his rhythm He just lays back and lets John drive the song. Same chords though, E, I'm sorry, A to E. Then on the D, George plays a D7 during the choruses, back to E. 
So again, just you have to just accentuate beats two and three and lay back and kind of get maybe closer to the neck to, to strum a little, light, a little lighter. So on a chorus, it would be. It's just, it's not that easy to do to play that kind of uh, intuitively, but George knew how to do it. Again, on the verse, the same thing, just a little, you know, pretty much strong on beats one and two, you know. And then he lightly gets an A7 on the uh, uh, third measure of, the, uh, of a verse, but he, but he only plays it at the first part, like again, extenuating beats two and three, so like. And then he lightly gets out of it to the D. It's just such good playing. Let me play a chorus and a uh, a chorus and a, and a verse like George would have done it. Let's see if I can do it right. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll do it better on my sound alike, but that's pretty much what he does. Now, same thing on the bridge. Uh, same F sharp uh, minor to B to D to E. And again, just accentuating beat two and three and letting John kick through on the rest of it. So a bridge is like. Right, just lightly getting through the chords. Uh, back to a chorus. <laughs> I, just, I just love that, that style of playing. It's so dynamic and, and fits so perfectly with John Lennon's rhythm. All right, and then his solo is overdub, you can tell, because he, he continues that same rhythm uh, part during the solo, you can hear the electric, but the solo goes like this. Um, so it, it leads in from the riff. Uh, yeah, right. So let me explain what he's doing there. He plays the riff and then he, uh, he sort of, you know, plays, uh, answers himself on the riff by playing. Right? And then thinking about an E chord, he'll play, he hammers into the uh, third of the E, gets the ninth of the E chord. Right? So we got. Next chord is D, so he plays the third and the root of D slides that down to the ninth and seventh of D. Right. Next chord is E, so he's thinking like basically E13. But he wants to bend that D note, which is a seventh scale degree of the E, up to the up to the E tonic. It's a little difficult with the, with his thick um, flat wound strings to go really hard. So he bends the eighth fret to get to the E and then plays like just the top part of an E9 and finishes out with the same thing that he, he began. But instead of letting down, just instead of releasing that, that bent up B note, he, uh, he, 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 he hits it on, he doesn't release it, he just hits the B. So again, the, the solo slow. Um, Marvelous, isn't it? So on the breakdown, remember John is playing on beats one. 
George plays on beats four for the first three measures, and then he variates. Uh, let me just show you. So, you know, da, 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 da. It'll be like this here. Here's George's part. One, two, three. <laughs> plays that little pickup going into the, the uh, last uh, verse. And then the last verse, you know, he continues his just, you know, great dynamic playing, you know. <laughs> just so good, you know, so dynamic and intuitive for a young guitar player to, to appreciate the greatness of John Lennon's rhythm uh, playing and then to just fit in just perfectly just just blows me away well once again I've done a sound alike so you can see how the guitar parts uh, fit together so let's have a look at that <laughs> And that's how the guitar parts fit together for Babies in Black. I suggest you use my sounds alike as a reference and learn each part and play along with me. You'll get it just like the Beatles. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. And again, that's where the charts and tabs are available to download for all of my lessons. And if you would, please subscribe to this channel. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thank you for hanging out with me. So she dresses